how about that? Henry Cecil, a win in the Breeders' Cup World Championships. It comes with midday. Mooster is trying, but he won't catch twice over, and twice over wins the third round and wins it well. Well, let's go to the champion stakes. Twice over midday, they're familiar rivals to themselves mm. as well as to other horses. Just two really, really solid Group 1 performers. Mm. Yeah, twice over is in very good form, and he, he comes at this time of the year. You know? um, he takes his time to come, and uh, he—I mean—he's working really well. He was almost—he's almost there now. I've got to just pull him back a little bit. You know? If he runs, he's, he's up to his best. I mean, he, he'll run really, really well. I mean, he, he, very well. Do you think he's a horse that's? Perhaps not given the credit he deserves. I know it's a bit of a cliche in racing, but well, he's yeah, a multiple, yeah. multiple Group One winner. I think so. I mean, you know, having won the Champion Stakes um, twice and the and the Jubmont, and, um, yeah, I think he he is sort of um, underrated. You know, I mean, he was he's been pretty good all through his life. Yeah, um, he is a good horse, very good horse, and um, you know. The two of them, I mean, they're going there hopefully with a chance. I mean, um, I think at York, midday, unfortunately, a brown horse sort of faded a little bit, you know, didn't run up to what probably his expectations or their expectation, and um, um, she got left in front a bit, a bit far out, you know. I think that if he could have held on another half furlong, uh, you know, it got, could have gone the other way at York. Um, on the other hand, I mean, uh, I would probably start twice over rolling, probably a furlong earlier than I did at York. Mm. Seems to have been, particularly with the filly midday, she's been, for me, slightly unlucky twice this season in that on both occasions, the way the race has panned out hasn't quite suited her. Yeah, Certainly, no, the Coronation Cup. No, you're, she you're might right. Have won. You're, you're right. I mean, you know, I mean, she, you know, there again. You know, I mean, she got left in front. She went a long way out. You know, and um, I think she's got with that one burst. You know, a furlong, fine. But I think when you get to two and a half, three furlongs, it's a different matter. Um, I mean, they both. You you wouldn't know actually which would finish in front of the other. But um, twice over. The thing about him, a mile and a quarter is his trip. Yeah. I mean, the other, the extra half furlong is a question mark. Yeah? So that's why York, I sort of let him not race really until he came into the straight. Uh, if I had him racing all the way, I mean, he could have just found it a little bit difficult like he did the time before against um, Byword, yeah? mm. uh, getting that last half furlong. I mean, that's one of the things that beat him. Yeah? One of the things taking on Byword with the a brown horse sitting in his slipstream. Yeah? So to get to get the mile, what two and a half? You know, I had to let him fiddle around for a, a few furlongs before I actually put him into the race. Well, this is back at half a furlong, uh, and um, we know at Ascot he gets a trip well because he finished very very fast when he finished second uh, from, from getting into trouble coming into the straight near the Abfall Larson. So I know you'll get a mile and a quarter, and it's just a question of getting motivated and moving a little bit earlier this, this time. Uh, if you were a jockey, would you ride midday or twice over, if you had the choice? If you had to make that choice? Um, I'm not sure, but I shall leave it as it was at York. Ian Mongan, what a great uh, servant he's been to the yard. Yeah, he, and he rides him very well and everything, and um, as Tom has ridden about six group ones on midday, winners. Um, I think it's only fair that I will leave it as it is. Yeah? And let's have a quick chat about the Phillies and Mares race. Vita Nova, an improving horse, desperately unlucky early at the season at Haydock when, when she clearly would have won a decent contest. Um, she must have every chance of picking up another big prize. Well, she's well herself. She's getting stronger. I mean, she's always a bit immature and backward and sort of even in um, as a four-year-old at York, you know, she's giving quite a lot of weight to the three-year-old, yeah? The Dali Yorkshire Oaks, yeah. In, in the Yorkshire Oaks, and she only went down half a length, wasn't it, or something like that? Um, I'd like to think she's a better filly now. Um, I'd like to have a little bit of give in the ground for her. As uh, long as she stays well and goes the way she's going, I mean, she must go there with a, with a chance. 
Obviously, we started the whole conversation by saying we want you to be champion trainer. It would be great for British racing, I think, and for you on a personal level to be champion trainer once again. And you were saying how tough it is. But then when, now we've talked about those four horses. It's all looking a lot more possible, isn't it? No, I think it looks exactly the same. Tough. Almost impossible. But we'll just, just keep going and see what happens. But Vita Nova, she's only found a multiple classic winner just too good for her in the Yorkshire Oaks. We've said Midday's got her brilliance. Twice over's bomb proof. Frankel's just about unbeatable. Yeah, but then you've got to worry about the opposition after that, haven't you? Are you that worried about the opposition, though? Well, not for Frankel, said, you're not, are you? As I said before, you, know, you have to respect everything and you know, things to go right. And um, I mean, obviously, I mean, if a reliable man, if it was given the ground, you'd have to worry about him in the um, champion stakes. I mean, um, if John Gosden's horse doesn't run in the arc and gets his ground, which Maybe he won't, but I mean, if he did get his ground, then you know, question I mean, I don't know the horse really. I mean, I, I wouldn't name him if I sort of he walked past me, but I mean, hopefully he's sort of a mile and a half horse, you know, trying to go a mile and a quarter. Eh? But I don't know. I mean, perhaps he, he's got the speed for a mile and a quarter. I've never watched him work, and um, I don't know much about him really. So, I, you know, you know, I have to sort of assess things as I know, and I'm, I'm not quite sure how to sum him up. Yeah. And we know that Kipco Champions Day is a, is a new concept, three million pounds up for grabs. It's a big deal for, for British racing. Mm. Um, how much can you, when you wake up on the day, enjoy the day? Or is it, are you like Franco in his younger, younger mm. hours when you're, will you, do you pace your box all day? Are you, will you be a nervous? No, no. I mean, obviously I, I, I will, because you know, I always feel I'm running the races with them. You know, I mean, um, no, I, I'd be a little bit nervous, and I won't enjoy it. No, I won't enjoy it at all. I should be pleased when it's all over. I'm, I get back into my car. I'm on my way home. Uh, but it's a challenge, and I do enjoy a challenge. But I mean, it's it's, it's a little bit nerve-wracking. And now I've got um, four horses running with, you know, who should run very well, and and, and they are each running one race, and I'm running four, aren't I? So basically, I'm going to be pretty exhausted by the end of it. But equally, you could be on the verge of 11th Trainers' Championship and you could have just seen Franco extend his unbeaten record midday. A filly you love, perhaps just touch off yeah. twice over and Vita Nova. Mm. Could be, will be, are two different things.